intro. Well, howdy, friends. Brian Flesher, Mad River Outfitters, the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. And I'm hiking my way back to Slough Creek, a place that's very near and dear to my heart, of course. I think I've been coming here since I was 17 years old. Camped back here a bunch of times. Been back here with my family, friends, Uncle Bill. <clears throat> Just a magical place. Probably one of the most well-known angling meccas. Place for people dream about going. And uh, I don't know, been back here dozens of times, I know that. And just looking forward to it, as always. Always fun to catch cutthroats on grasshoppers. So. Quite a sentimental place. I, <clears throat> my will currently states that my ashes go here, Slough Creek. But hopefully that's a ways away. You know, when you're walking through bear country, it's common practice to uh, just make some noise. You know, clap. And uh, also we shout, hey bear. Hey bear. Hey bear. Just passing through. Just lets them know you're in the area. Alerts them so you don't surprise them. I mean, the worst thing you can do when you walk up on a bear, or the worst thing you can do is surprise a bear <clears throat> there's nothing worse um, and we are certainly in bear country hey bear it's all cool hey bear Hey bear. Hey bear. Bear? Is that you? Is that you, bear? Good to see you, man. How you been? Remember me? I fished here dozens of times. All right, friends, <clears throat> we made it to uh, Slough Creek. It's, it's always a thrill when you're coming down the hill and you first see the water, and then you just get to this majestic, this is the first meadow. It's about a 45 minute hike and not too bad, but I wanted to take just a minute and tell you about the kit that I brought in here today. And everything is right here in my Sims uh, waterproof backpack. And I brought a nine foot five weight, which is just fine for throwing grasshoppers. Uh, you could bring a fuller back here, not, not a problem. But I brought, uh, I've kind of been on an older rod kick recently, so I dug out an old Scott S4. I've thrown hoppers with it before. I've, I've got the pack set up um, to where I can fish out of it. I don't need to bring a vest or anything like that because I really don't need much up here. Uh, but I've got a pair of hemostats on a zinger. I've got um, a few spools of tippet 
Primarily what I need up here is 2X and 3X, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then I do have a pair of nippers, my Sims Guide nippers on the lanyard, uh, wrapped around the straps of my pack. And then just real quick, um, I did bring wading boots. Um, you know, I, I, I like to make hikes like this in hiking boots. So I, I wore my hiking boots up here in a good pair of socks. And then I brought my Sims, or excuse me, my Corkers. This is the new, uh, I can't remember the name of the boot, but we'll probably flash it up on the screen. But this is um, that new uh, boot from Corkers. And it has the Alumatrax, the aluminum bars on the bottom. It's by far the best traction. Of course, uh, if felt was allowed, I would have I would have brung felt, but felt is not allowed in the park. Um, but this is better on these gravel bottoms and hiking. Uh, you know, I'll be traipsing along the banks here quite a bit. So having those uh, soles, and then when I get over to the Madison. Um, I'll probably leave these on if I'm waiting a lot in the Madison. When I'm in the boat, I'll have my felt soles on. Uh, of course, with the Corker's boots, I can swap out the soles. Um, neoprene socks. I need the neoprene socks. These are sized for my waders. So I'm going to take my hiking boots and my socks off, just go in here barefoot. And that way I can walk out with dry socks and dry shoes. And then, of course, uh, never forget your rain gear. So I brought my, my rain gear there. Um, <clears throat> Just a couple of fly boxes. I bought my brought my hopper box, and this is the new uh, fish pond ta or tacky uh, made by fish pond. The new pescador fly box. I think we did a video review of this here recently, and I, I love this box. Uh, I really do. Now that I've been using it a little bit more, it's a fantastic hopper box. But I can get almost any size flies I want in here. In fact, we got a tip over at Parks Fly Shop yesterday about maybe trailing some ants underneath the grasshopper. And these are size 18 or 20 ants and I can still fit them in the same box that I can get the hoppers in. So, And of course I brought, being the soft tackle guy I am, I brought my box of soft tackles. Of course, if I want to trail a soft tackle behind, I have yet to meet a trout that won't eat a soft tackled fly. Uh, I brought my McLean angling net. Um, this uh, we've shown you this before it's been a few years but this is a great backpacker style net I'll put this on my belt so that I do have a net which I prefer to have up here when I'm fishing alone and then just a bag of accessories um, I've got of course my reel um, with just a floating fly line is all I need the leader I'll be using I love you've heard me say this before I love these airflow poly leaders especially for throwing grasshoppers um, for throwing larger dry flies here in the West. These airflow poly leaders, I use the five foot version. Um, and when I rig up that leader, I'll talk about it real quick. And then I just have a few fly floatants. I've got the um, high and dry, the liquid fly floatant, which works great on grasshoppers and foam flies. I do have some gel floatant. And then of course my frogs fanny, uh, which is the powder which I'll coat my soft tackles with if I uh, have to resort to fish and soft tackle. So that's it. It's a really pretty simple load in and load out. Um, so uh, I'm going to do a, a little bit of quick rigging here. And as I do that, uh, I'll, as I rig up my reel, I want to talk about uh, rigging up that leader properly because that's really important. All right, we walked up a little further here, up the river. Uh, not that it's crowded at all, but there's a couple guys down there. So we walked up a little bit further and this is water that I know a little bit better. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go ahead and get rigged up. Um, and again, I'm just fishing your basic Western nine foot five weight. And we'll get rigged up and keep walking up and find some fish. It was really cool. We just walked up to this spot and three river otters were swim swimming by. That was fantastic. I don't believe that I've ever seen that up in here. Um,
Okay, this, the most important thing about these airflow poly leaders is they come with an exposed core right here at the front, and I believe they have a perfection loop tied in them. But it's wildly, wildly important. You've got to know what diameter this core is in order to attach the proper tippet so that this leader works properly. And a uh, cool thing, our website will tell you what the diameter of this core is. And on this particular one, this is the standard trout uh, five foot butt section. Um, and the connector is zero X, okay? And then um, I'm gonna add about two foot of two X, maybe a foot and a half, and then maybe a foot and a half to two foot of three X to the front. And that's going to give me a nine foot leader and these things just work great. I will put a little bit of the paste fly floatant on the, of course, the tip of my fly line and the butt section. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, of course, of loops, but in this case, I, I don't mind. It's not that big of a deal. It'll still cast well. And that way I could change this if I needed to. So, um, but understanding the diameter of this exposed core where you can you can tie a blood knot or you can do a loop to loop connection there but again i'll go 2x and then i'm going to go down to 3x for uh, these grasshoppers that i'm going to throw here today I may not get back up. Little guy. Cut, cut in the throat. Well, friends, we've been fishing, I don't know, about three hours so far. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's tough. Man, we've had, we're finding some fish. We got one, small one, had another decent one on. Um, I blew a couple hook sets, of course. But it's tough, man. They're coming up and looking. I've tried about six or eight different hoppers. I've hugged the ant off. I, I put on some soft tackles a jig nymph, uh, we've been sight fishing, we've been blind fishing. It's tough, it really, really bright skies. In fact, the smoke that we saw yesterday that we've been hearing about is kind of gone, it's super bright. I don't know, that might be having an effect, um, but it's, it's tough fishing. So we've got another couple hours before we gotta get out of here, so we'll, we'll keep at it and see what happens. But uh, we'd love to show you a cutthroat or two. Well, friends, we just hiked out of Slough Creek. Uh, I think it's about two o'clock. We quit fishing a little bit after one. Of course, you gotta be off the water at two o'clock anywhere in the park. And in a lot of places in Southwest Montana due to the hoot owl restrictions, 
um, which is fine because I'll be honest with you, it was really disappointing fishing. Uh, out of the dozens of times I've fished Slough Creek, that's the worst I've ever seen it. Who knows? I mean, obviously that's just fishing. I, I do think that, I mean, we have bluebird skies today and we've been hearing nothing but stories uh, about the smoke uh, throughout the park and throughout Southwest Montana from the fires. And we can attest yesterday when we got here, you couldn't see the mountains and now it's just crystal clear. We had a lot of wind yesterday. We had some storms blow through last night and it appears that it's uh, cleared most of the smoke out. So this is probably the brightest day those cutthroat trout have seen in weeks. Um, and who knows, could be pressure, could be whatever. Um, I mean, I, I did catch one small little cutthroat, uh, tons and tons of refusals. I think I went through all the hoppers in my box. I tried trailing the ant thing that uh, Richard Parks told us about. Um, I tried some soft tackles, I tried a few nymphs, and just tons of refusals. Um, you know, we saw plenty of fish, we saw some decent ones. I had a couple on right before we uh, quit fishing and I blew it, to be honest with you. Uh, just got excited, pressure trying to get something on film, but overall disappointing. But still, absolutely a pleasure, a pleasure to hike up into Slough Creek, one of the most beautiful places on earth, and it's still one of my favorite places on earth, no question. Um, you know, just an honor to be in a place like this and to be able to hike back to Slough Creek. So, you know, that's the way fishing goes. So we are off that way to the slide in. I'm gonna go see our good friend Kelly Gallup, John McClure and the gang at the slide in and spend the next three days on the Madison. So uh, hopefully our luck will change. I'm sure it will. Gallop slide in my home away from home. Oh, long day. Fished Slough Creek fairly unsuccessfully. And then uh, went up to Cook City. At the northeast entrance of the park, Cook City had some lunch. <laughs> and then made the long drive from the, the northeast entrance down to Roosevelt, up to Mammoth, down to Norris, over to Madison, West Yellowstone, picked up some groceries and such for breakfast because we're getting a 5.15 start in the morning. And I finally made it here to slide in. So long day, long drive. I'm exhausted, I'm ready for a shower. Um, going to cook some bison steak and get my gear together for tomorrow and get a good night's sleep. So uh, we'll see you on the Madison. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.